Sundress. This is a clearance rayon fabric from Spotlight. And the pattern is Simplicity 1801. And I made the blue one, which is the long maxi dress. So you can't really see it, but it does go all the way to the floor. It is so comfy. I am definitely going to live in this dress this season. Um, I will also probably make some more. So if you would like to see how to make this, please stay tuned. Alrighty guys, so you've seen the dress at the start, obviously, which I have not yet made, which is so trippy. But things you are going to need for this particular pattern is a normal foot and a zipper foot or invisible zipper foot. That will depend on both what you're using and what you have available. I am using an invisible zipper. This one is from Lincraft, but I don't, I have ordered, but it hasn't arrived for an invisible zipper for this machine. So I will be showing you how to install the invisible zipper with a normal zipper foot. It is a little bit more tricky, but it's not impossible. So the first piece we are going to need is piece number one, which is the bodice front. All sewing clothing patterns, especially dresses, go front to back, top to bottom. So piece one will always be the first piece you need because it'll be the front and center. And then they kind of work out and back. I actually think they work it so it's the in order of the pieces you need to use at any given time. But anyway. So I'm going to take this piece and then put it right sides together at the front small V section. Which is here. Now I'm just going to be using a straight stitch. Nothing fantastic about that. Um, all dress patterns have a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So that's something to think about. I've got 5 8 on my plate, so I can just line it up along there. So we're going to stitch and back stitch. I should also mention that I have a size 75 needle in. And then on the pattern, there would have been a dot to stop at. So we're not going to sew all the way to the end, like so. So you should have a bit of a gap at the top. And then that opens out to be the front. Now this is a gathered pattern, so there's going to be a lot of gathering. So we're going to gather along the top shoulder part. So to gather, all I do is make my stitch length as long as it can be. And then I'm going to go about a quarter of an inch from the edge. So I'm going to stitch and back stitch to lock it in. I know this seems weird, but bear with me. Then I'm going to stitch nice and close to the edge, all the way along. I am going to pivot and do one stitch down like that. And then I am going to turn and go back next to all the other stitches. Like this. And then when you get to the end, we are again going to back stitch to lock it in. And then I use a stiletto or sewing awl, which is like a pointy jabby thing. And you just grab that one stitch at the end that you did. Sometimes it's easier to grab the bobbin one. And then you just slide the fabric and it will gather along those two lines. Now, the reason I like to do two lines instead of one is it's more stable and it's easier to gather and move along. So see how that's now gathering? You just pull it down like that. So we're going to repeat that process with the other one. So I'm going to put my needle down, I'm going to stitch and I'm going to back stitch to lock it in so it can't come undone and then stitch along, get almost to the end and then I'm going to pivot and do one stitch down like that and then we're going to pivot back the other way. Now you just have to make sure that you don't cross over the stitches because that's probably the worst thing you could do. Then you'll have to pull it all apart. And then we're going to back stitch at the end again. Trim the tails. And then again, oops, rayon. I'm always dropping rayon. It's going to make a lovely dress, but it's not necessarily lovely to sew. All right, so we're going to grab our one thread here and then just pull gently and then just maneuver it across like that. So now we can gather both of those edges. Excellent. The next step is a 
I've got the instructions here since I've never made it before. So then we're going to pin the yoke, which should be piece number, no, we want yoke front, not yoke back. So it should be theoretically piece number two. There are a lot of pieces here, which is why I got my handy dandy portable table to put them all on. So the yoke front is actually just quite a small piece. That looks like it's it there. So it is piece two, yoke front. So it's um, just like a small, almost square, but not quite. So we're going to take that piece. And so we need the gathering to make it so this is the same size. So this is how you can tell. So I just need to gather a bit more. Also spread out your gathers. You don't want it all in one spot. That'll look weird. Like that. And then we're just going to place that together like so, making sure that your gathers are nice and even and then I'm going to stitch that on. Now you might want to use pins because again it's rayon and rayon is not my friend. But I have learnt to suffer through it because it does look amazing and I do want amazing clothes. So I'm just going to use, I'm actually going to use Wonder Clips instead of pins. Uh, but you can use whatever you like. And then we can do the same to the other end and then I can chain stitch them. So you can actually join the end. This one is actually pretty close. So it only needs a little bit more gathering until it's together. And then I'm just going to spread those gathers evenly between the space. Now I'll be wanting to put my gathers face down so that they're touching the feed dog so that they move through nice and evenly. So we're going to go back to a normal stitch length now. And then we're going to stitch along here. So I'm going to stitch and back stitch. And you want your gathers face down, not face up. Makes it much, much easier to do this, I promise. And then we're going to grab the other one and do the same thing. Backstitch, that's probably too much, but that's okay. And backstitch at the end again. The reason I've got so many um, stitches there is that's actually the gathering pull that I was using. Now, if those gathering stitches are now in your way, you can in fact uh, pull them out. I'm going to separate those. And so now, it looks like this. So I've got this gather in the corner, which you can't really see because it's black on black, um, but it just, it's going to make it fit nicely. So the next step is to take the back yoke piece, which should be piece number three or four. So three is the bodice back, which should have been uh, done on the fold. I like that. And then we're going to take the yoke and attach it along the top like this. So it should, I'm pretty sure we don't need to gather this one. So you should just be able to sew straight across there. It should be a nice straight line for you. Uh, feel free to use pins for this. personally pin rayon I get puckers so I try to avoid it where possible all right so now I am going to overlock all of these bits before I keep Oh no, we're still okay. We don't have... No, I do. I want to overlock this. So if you've got an overlocking stitch on your machine, you can definitely use that. Um, I'm personally going to be using my actual overlocker just because it's rayon and I really don't want it to misbehave. So I'm now going to go and overlock the seams on the front and that yoke that we just attached. 
So I will be right back after I have attached those. Okay, so they're now all overlocked and looking lovely. Um, I'm just overlocking with a white, uh, but you can do black or whatever. It won't matter from the inside. White doesn't show through black, but if I was making a white dress, I wouldn't use black because it would show through. Okay, so now I'm going to take that front piece that I did and attach it to the back piece at the shoulders. So, this one to this one here. I'm thinking... Yeah, no, that's right. No, that can't be right. What is going on? Alright, so those are now overlocked. So we're going to take that back piece and that front piece and we're going to join them together at the shoulder bits. So like this. I had it sitting here for convenience sake. Uh, but we're just going to go along here. We're going to backstitch. We always backstitch. Using the seam allowance guide and then backstitch. Now I'm going to chain stitch this, but you need to make sure you run your hands along it so that nothing has any twists. Otherwise you've got to unpick it again. We don't want to have to do that. So... I'm going to then do this one. So I'm going to just lift up my foot a little bit to get it underneath. Stitch across and back stitch. And so then that's that done. Lift it up. And so now we should have something that's going to pop over your head. Now I will need to overlock that. So I'm just going to pop it aside because we're going to need to do some more bits. So my... Um, facing has been interfaced with a medium woven which is the same I use for bags funnily enough so I've done the front and the back so this is how it's gonna sit so this is I'm gonna flip it over onto itself right sides together and then we're gonna stitch both these bits together as well so this is the facing of what we just did make sure you use the correct seam allowance or it won't fit that is very important so I'm also going to overlock these bits, but I'm going to do another bit as well, which is not in the order of the pattern, just because of all the overlocking I need to do. So I'm going to do those two. And then I'm going to grab piece number seven, the midriff front. And I am also going to grab midriff back which is the piece that is no longer attached to this. Awesome. Here it is. So we're going to go midriff front and midriff back and put them right sides together. And we want to stitch this side here. I'm just looking at the picture. So when you open it out like this, you need to stitch this side. Now you can put the zip on any side really. It doesn't necessarily matter. But I'm picking this side because that's what the pattern has. You can do it backwards if you've got any kind of arm issues and you don't like the zip where it is. Uh, you can just reverse it. You just stitch the other half together. And you'll do the same with the skirt. You're going to make sure you do that as well. So now that that's done, I'm going to go and overlock here. And the outer edge of this. So if you don't want to overlock it, you can also fold it over as a double fold. And stitch it but I'm going to overlock it because it's easier so I'm going to overlock the whole outside and the seams and then this seam here as well as well as the other ones on the other part and so if I've got all of them done it's just it's just easier to do it in bulk amounts if you've got your machine sitting next to you you can literally do one then the other one then the other but because this is a video I can't do that so I'm gonna go and overlock all of that and then I'll be back okay again. so that's now all overlocked so we're gonna take our piece that, that should fit over your head if it doesn't I'd say you've done something wrong. And then we're going to take our facing piece, which kind of looks like a lanyard, to be totally honest. And we're going to put these right sides together. So this middle section here goes against that front seam, like that. So that's how that's going to work. And then we come up and it should also join at the shoulder seams. Oh, rayon. Rayon is my enemy a little bit. 
If you've never made a dress before, I highly don't suggest you start with rayon. You can make this dress out of like a cotton. That would be much easier to deal with, I'm not going to lie. I love the way rayon looks, but it is definitely slippery and difficult to work with. So just keep that in mind. I'm not trying to deter you so you never use it, but I am just trying to be very, very honest with you. It's not my friend. So, again, clips or pins. And we're going to pin it or clip it together. The reason I've got the interface part on top is because it's more stable, so it's easy to work with. And the shoulder seam should match up. Just so you know. We'll clip that there. Just move that down like that. So then again, we can come straight over to the other side and clip the other shoulder seam. Like this. You can use pins. There is no right or wrong. I'm just using these because I've got them here. And I haven't grabbed my pins from wherever they are. I actually don't know where they are right now. I rearranged my sewing room yet again to get rid of all the desks because I wasn't using them. I had them in here for sewing lessons and then they just started collecting things that I was too lazy to put away. So I have removed them so that I stopped doing that. I am my own worst enemy sometimes. Okay. And then we also want to clip the back section, which should work out quite nicely. Adding clips or pins. I just don't want it to shift while I'm sewing. So you might want to use quite a few because it is slippery. Like that. And then I just need to come and finish this front section. You know what, I'm going to stitch that all the way up because it kind of looks like it wants it. Even though the pattern said not to, I'm going to do it because whatever. Because if I stitch it up, it now sits better here. Almost. Again, rayon is being slippery, so I need to get it to sit where it needs to be. It doesn't always love me like it should, which is why it's taking so long to pin. It'll get there in the end, though. There we go. So now I'm going to stitch around that. Then we have to overlock that. The reason I didn't edit this part out is to show you just how ridiculous it can be, but it is not impossible. I've got my extender table on so that I can take most of the weight from this as well. So I kind of want to start at the V and then work my way around, I think, because the V is going to be the trickiest part. Okay, just going to re-thread this because I can see some issues. So I've got a needle threader on this, which makes life much, much easier. Although it is also even easier if I don't keep the fabric underneath it, but whatever. Okay. Pull the tail all the way through. Like that. So I'm going to start the V and I want to use my seam allowance. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to stitch and back stitch and then we're just going to work our way around.
just twisting it around as we go. So I'm just maneuvering it around and pulling the clips off. Now if you've used pins you can just run over them, it might be easier for you. You always want to stop with your needle down when you readjust the fabric. Oops. And it's not a video unless I drop something. So I just drop something. So we're nearly back to the start again. We're on our way down now. So now it should all be beautifully attached. Now the first thing I'm going to do is at this point is I'm going to snip it so that it's not gathering there. And then you'll get a nicer point for when we turn it around. So I am going to start by overlocking this seam that we just did that went all the way around. So I'm going to overlock that and then we can come back and understitch it and I'll show you understitching. So we've overlocked now to stop the fraying. If you don't, again, if you don't have an overlocker, you can just do zigzag. So if I take the table off, this actually might be easier to do. So I can basically put the loop around the machine like this and then I want to have my facing part on the inside. And I'm going to fold that seam allowance towards the facing. Now I would like to start at the point and work my way around from there. So here's the point. I'm going to fold that underneath and then just stitch really, really close to the seam just to hold it under. To be stitching the seam allowance to the facing piece with as little wrinkles as possible. You want it to be taut without stretching it. Not that you can really stretch it, it's not even facing. So now you just want to keep bringing it around. So I'm stitching it down underneath. And then back stitch. Lift up your needle pull it off and trim. So now that should sit inside there like that with minimal issues. And this bottom part should actually come down and join to that bottom there. So I'm just going to tack or base that down in place as well right along that edge and that will help to hold it in place. Which is very clever. It means it'll hold it down so that we get the best V possible. Ta da! Alright, so next on our list is along this bottom between the two points, we need to do a gathering stitch. So I'm going to crank my stitch length all the way up to four and I'm going to do the same thing I did before. So we're going to stitch and back stitch. And then slowly along the edge, we're going to do the longest stitch length your machine will, which for me is four, which is four millimeters. Along like that. And then we're going to do one stitch up like that. And then we're going to go back the other way. 
was easier, you possibly could have done it earlier. Um, just make sure you don't go over your stitches. It doesn't matter if the lines aren't perfectly straight, but it does matter if you cross those lines because it's going to make your life so much harder. So the front's now got its gathering stitch. We're going to do the same to the back. So from here, one stitch, back the other way, now the front was meant to have two pieces of gathering. But I think it's going to be easier for me if I do it as one. So, that and that. Now our midriff that we already sewed earlier. Basically we need to fit the dress in the front from here to that seam. So this will be our guide as to how much we need to gather. So we take our front. And we need to gather a fair amount. But, so we're going to pull it, so I'm going to grab that single thread and then pull and work it across. So you want to go across that front bit. So this part here is actually going to be flat, but it means that I can work this across all the way so that I can get it more even. Like that, and then a bit more, and then you just want to keep checking it against here. So I still need to do another little bit. I can now just grab onto it. I don't necessarily have to use the stiletto to hold it. So we've got the gathering there and then a little bit more gathering here and then I'm going to check it again. Up, round, round and down. Excellent. That worked out well. I also probably want to join this side together for when I'm going to attach it. So this side here will be the side where the join is. So depending on which side you put your zip on, if you decide to change sides you'll obviously do it opposite. But I'm going to stitch this and then overlock it and then I'll gather the back on the back piece and then we can attach this one on. Back to a normal stitch length. Stitch it down. Back stitch it. And so now, if you wanted to, now that we've established that the front is mainly where we need it, I'm going to overlock this really, really quickly. I can actually just turn around. I positioned my overlocker so I just swivel in my chair. So like that. I usually go off camera for lots of pieces, but a single piece wouldn't hurt. Trim off the excess. And so now I'm going to take the front of this like that. Flip it right sides together, and I can pin together this part here. So I'm going to make each of the, the seam allowance here go in opposite directions so that it sits nice and flat, and then whack a clip on it. And then I'm going to do the same thing. So to this edge here, since we've already mainly gathered this, this will help. So I put that there. And clip it together. And then if everything's gone to plan, the highest point of the curve is where this part in the middle goes. And you should just be able to attach it. Now if there's too much or too little gathering, we can fix that as we go. We just want to check and make sure it's all going to fit. 
Now with your gathering, you can knot it off if you need to, if you're worried that it won't fit anymore. Spread out the gathers so they're all nice and neat. And there you go, so that's one half. So now we're gonna do the same to the other half, except I'm first going to attach the edge so that I can see how much I need to bring in. So I can pretty much attach it up to the start of the gathers like that. And then I'm gonna take my stiletto and pull that single thread and then just hold it until it all fits. So you're gonna move the gathers all the way to the start of the stitching so that it's gonna fit nicely. You want them to be as even as you can get them, which again is why we do the two stitches. And that's all the gathering we really need by the look of it. So I'm just going to attach there up to the start of the gathering. Like this, and then you just kind of want to spread them so that they're even. You don't want to have all the gathers in one spot. You want to spread it out so it's pretty evenly gathered. And the best thing about using clips is if you need to, you can still adjust the gathering between the clips. Move that across like that. And then clip again. Just even as you can get them, because it'll look nicer if it's even. You don't want one end super scrunch and then one end not as scrunch. It won't look as nice. So, now we've got our midriff part attached with clips. So you can see that. So now we're just going to stitch that. And again, I would like to have the gathering on the bottom because it's easier to work with, in my opinion. Of course, you can ignore me. It has been known to happen, and that's okay. If you prefer it with the gathers on top, you can definitely do it like that. There is no rule that says you can't. I just personally find it easier to do it the other way. And a thread was just stuck on my foot it does happen sometimes especially with me and domestics i'm trying to do more domestic videos as per your request and rayon works out better on this than my industrial anime gathering on the front than the back that is so that it fits all of your front in it and backstitch okay so now we're really starting to get a dress forming here This still needs to be tucked down, but I always do that at the end. Right, next on our list is, I think it's the skirt. It's either the skirt or the armholes. No, armholes are last, so that's fine. Awesome. So we're gonna grab our skirt. You should have two pieces. One should be the front and one should be the back. And I've chosen the long one, so there's going to be a lot of fabric here. Okay. So, the other thing I might want to do is while I've got it here, you can actually grab two clips and mark where the um, gathering is going to stop. Because we need to do gathering stitches from A to B. Because this is cut on the fold. So it's just one really, really big piece of fabric. 
and I will be using this skirt to hack another pattern in my next dress video. So we'll pop that aside. And then again, we're going to do our gathering stitches. So open it up. We're going to start here. Longer stitch length, we're going to stitch a couple back stitch. that it's going to um, fray and fall off. And then we go one stitch down as always. And I always manually crank that so I don't accidentally do extras. Why is that still stuck on there? And then we're just going to go next to those stitches. So usually I have to go a little bit slower on the way back to make sure that I don't cross over and also because the weight of the dress is now in the throat of the machine which is this piece here and so depending on your fabric it can be quite tricky and it's not worth going full speed and then wrecking it back where we started and we're going to back stitch and lock it in. So that's our front. That is a lot of um, space to be gathering but that's alright. We're going to do the same to our back piece now. So it should pretty much look the same. Not even going to lie, I think it looks the same. It is slightly wider at the bottom than the top. It's got a slight taper which is fine. And so then again, I'm going to line these up and put the two clips on, which you could also use pins if you wanted to. There's no right or wrong in that. And that's just where our gathering goes to. And you'll notice it doesn't go all the way to the sides. That's so that you don't have, if you've already got wide hips, the whole point of this is to try and make them more slender. Uh, so if you've got all those gathering on the side of you, it won't look as elegant. Also, on one side there's going to be a zip, so you don't want a whole bunch of gathers in a zip. That's also not fun. So, same thing again. That is full speed for this machine. We're going to do one and then we're going to twist it and do one stitch down. Move all of that out of my way. You always want to keep the needle down so that you can pivot this without losing your place. And then we're going to go back. Now I'm actually holding my finger here for two reasons. One, it's helping guide the fabric. And two, it's stopping any lumps forming under where I'm stitching. Also keep an eye on your bobbin. Mine's nearly empty. Uh, if you run out of bobbin halfway through, you will have to pull it out and start again. So just be conscious of that. You can't like backstitch and start in the middle of a gathering. It does not work. So if you run out of thread for any reason, you will have to go back fix it. Okay, so that's our back. And this is our front. So we're going to put them right sides together before we gather them. And then we want to make sure that we're putting the zip on the right side. So where's our front? Front is here. So front to front means that we will be leaving this side open. This is how I check because it's it's better to check than not check. So we put the front piece to the front piece and that will be the half open. So we need to overlock this whole side. And 
And again, this is a maxi, which is why it's so much fabric. Um, but I don't own any maxis, which is a recent discovery I have discovered. So I would like some in my cupboard for summer. Now, fun fact about this particular seam, because we are gathering the skirt, it won't actually matter if you're not doing the perfect seam allowance. You can be a little bit more daring and casual. All it will mean is that there's slightly more gathering on the front and the back if you do a bigger seam and slightly less gathering. No, less gathering if you do a big seam, more gathering if you do a small seam. Which basically means one extra ruffle. But still. Oh. Oh no, I'm still stitching. I thought I ran out of bobbin thread then. I know I'm close to running out, so I really just need to keep an eye on that. So I'm going to put all this weight on the table so that it's not pulling at my garment. Now we need to overlock that. Overlock that and then we're up to a gathering and attaching. Excellent, so that is now done. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open all of this out. This is the top up here. I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna attach it at the side. So here's our side seam. You'll also notice I haven't overlocked this yet. We will do both the skirt and this together or you could have just done it then because you went to an overlocker. Honestly, whatever's working. Now, this seam here, you want to make sure that it's sitting the same way at this end as that end so that you won't have a twist underneath because that's not what we want at all. And then I'm just going to add a couple of clips up to the start of the gathers on both sides. And that's just going to hold it in place that way and then we come to the edge of the dress over here and we're going to clip that together and this is the easiest way to work out how much gathering you need to do you literally just keep gathering it until it fits in the space that we have now just created so that's all our gathering so I'm gonna again grab my stiletto and grab that single thread and pull and then just work the gathers across all the fabric. Now, if you wanted a more gathered skirt than the pattern already has, you would just cut this piece bigger. Um, so you would fold your fabric in half and then the part where it's meant to be on the fold, you just move it inwards away from the fold to create more. Um, but I think this will be fine, honestly. That's probably too much gathering now. But we want to move it all the way to the edge because we backstitched at that end, it actually won't move, which is awesome. And then just move the gathering through. I'm going to put all the weight on the table, and this is now going to look a little bit messy. But we still need to gather some more because it still doesn't fit in the gap. So we just keep gathering until it fits flush. So we're getting close now. Close, but not not quite there but pretty close so I'm gonna move some of these gathers further over here like that shuffle 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 and that now fits so now I can grab some clips and just clip it in place again making sure that all our gathers are nice and even and not too scrunched in one section because you will see it once you're finished. You don't see it necessarily now, but you will, I promise you. I'm just gonna add these 
along like that. Last little gap up there. And so that is now attached. Now you can actually just trim this off. I don't trim it all the way to the fabric in case it tries to undo itself, but that half is now securely attached. So now we're going to go do the same to the other end. I'm going to join the open end because this is where the zip will be later when we get to that. We're going to put some clips up to there. And so then again, that's the fabric that has to go into this space. So I'm going to grab that single downward stitch and gently pull. You don't want to pull as hard as you can. You will just snap your thread. You just want to gently tug it until it gives. You want to make sure, I've only moved those about halfway across the gathering space. So you want to make sure that you always push them all the way to the start of the gathering. Like that. And then I'm going to continue to move it along. Trying to space it as evenly as possible the whole time. Because you never know when it's just going to suddenly fit. So that's it for this part. Now I'm just going to disperse it more evenly. Because some bits are definitely more gathered than the others. And you don't want that. Excellent. So now that I'm holding that, that should now just line up. But I'm still going to add clips because clips are your friend. And I'm just working it so that you can feel if one area is a lot tighter and more compact than the others. So you just maneuver them around a little bit as you're clipping it together. You can use pins for this. I just like clips because I think they're quicker uh, and they're also not stabbing fabric like holes in your fabric so if you you if you have used the satin for example you don't want to be stabbing too many holes because satin the holes tend to stay if you are using satin make sure you use really fine pins and not chunky ones or it just leaves holes everywhere okay so back to a normal stitch length I am now going to stitch all the way along that Now, if you can, you want to put as much weight on the table as possible so it's not pulling on your threads as you sew. And I've got my gathers underneath so that the feed dogs will pull them through nice and evenly. As you get more and more done, we're going to put all the weight over there. We also want to make sure that nothing's going under there so that we're not going to have a big random gaping part where you've grabbed this extra fabric. So you also kind of want to push it underneath but also on the table. More room than what I have given myself would be a better option. like a full table instead of this half table I've done. I'm also checking on my bobbin constantly because I don't want to take off all these clips and it's not stitching anything. This bobbin is lasting longer than I thought it would, so points to it. But you do just still want to check the whole time. Unless you've just put a new bobbin in and it's not a big deal. now you should have this now don't worry about the fact that this is sticking up i will be stitching it through all of the seams at the end i always do that at the end 
Um, so I'm not really paying much attention to the fact that it sits weird at the moment because we're ignoring that. But you should now have what's starting to really look like a dress. So yay. Those two seams each side of the midriff now need to be overlocked or zigzagged so that it won't fray unless you love hand washing which I do not um, and then it's just armhole zip and hem we're nearly done right so on top of the overlocking we were doing I have also wound a new bobbin and I have overlocked both the sides and the bottom so I don't have to keep going back to the machine as often I've also now put on my zipper foot or if you've got an invisible zipper foot do that so now I'm going to lay this right sides up and I'm going to lay the zipper right sides up like this and this is how the zip is going to sit. So what we want to do is I want to grab that top and unzip it because it's easier to work with and then I'm going to flip it up and over so that the top edge is going to touch here because we've still got our facing to put on so that will hide that raw edge and then we're going to stitch down this side. Now the idea is, I never start right at the edge. What I actually do, and this is with zipper, invisible zipper or not, I also haven't threaded the machine since I did my thing around. Right, we should probably thread the machine. It's definitely gonna help my cause. Can't sew much without thread. All right, so I'm going to stitch backwards first. I know this seems counterintuitive, but I just, with invisible zips, I always find backwards first works better. And then I'm going to stitch along next to the zip. Now I'm not trying to get as close to the teeth as humanly possible at this stage. I'm actually just attaching it. I just want it to be one. And then I can try and get closer to the teeth in a minute. It's not currently the priority one. The priority one is attaching the zip. Then I will try and get closer to the teeth. And I find, like, with an invisible zip, uh, like an invisible zip of foot, sorry, it's going to automatically do it close for you, so this is not as much of an issue as right now. But because I don't have one of those, what I first want to do is make sure that it's going to stay where I want it to, like that. So now the zip is attached. It's not as close as we want, but it is certainly exactly where we need it. So now I will come and do a second row of stitching trying to get as close to the teeth as possible because the closer you are the teeth the more invisible it becomes now with zipper invisible zips you'll actually be able to kind of push it and roll it out of the way which will allow you to get even closer to the teeth now obviously don't stitch the teeth but roll them out of the way and try and stitch kind of in the ditch Now, you want to do this slowly so that you don't accidentally get the teeth. I also try to get a little less close whenever there's a thick seam because you'll find that it won't want to go over there. But the rest of the way down, I am just moving slowly and pulling the teeth back with my hand. You will notice my finger is quite close to the needle, but if you go slowly, you'll be fine. Getting close to the end, and then I'm just gonna back stitch to lock it in, and we're good. Like that, pull, snip, and then you should zip it up to make sure that that side is nice and closed. Now you can always go back and do a third and fourth pass if you need to, but for right now, I am quite happy with that. Trim off the tails at the top because they're annoying me. Right, and so then we're going to grab the dress and bring it around like this. And what I want to do is I want to hold this right at the top and I want this seam, I want the midriff seam to match. So this is more important than what's going on at the top. Because if this seam doesn't match, I promise it will stick out. So, all I have to do is, with a Chaco pen, or a chalk pen, or a marker that you can see on the black, you are just going to mark across the zip where the seam is. So you can see I've got those, you can't really see because of the lighting. See how I've got those two lines there? 
they perfectly line up with the midriff seams. So now what I want to do is I want to switch this foot to the other side first because that's going to be the easiest way to do this and then I can still work top to bottom. I'm going to hold on to the top like I did before and unzip it again like we did before and then I'm going to go up and over. You can't go under because then it won't work and I'm going to start where the marks are and stitch the zip where the marks are. So I want that mark to perfectly line up with that seam and then I'm going to stick it. You know what? I probably didn't need to change the foot after all. Just stick it on the same side. Like that. I don't want it to move and I'm just going to stitch it and back stitch it. And again, I'm not trying to get too close to anything at the moment. I am purely just trying to line up the seams, which I failed at because it all moved. Oh, stop it. You just want to unsnip that because everything moved. Pins are probably most beneficial to you right now. And if I knew where mine were, I would go and get them. So this way up, we're going to grab the other side so it's holding it together and then flip it over like so. And then that one goes there. I'm going to use a clip and see if that helps me. And then that one lines up there. So again, another clip. Small clips in between because clips aren't as strong as pins in this particular instance. And then I'm just going to tack the midriff to exactly where it needs to be. So the way, by doing this, you are saving yourself some time of stitching the whole thing and then realizing it's wrong. If these are exactly lined up, we shouldn't have an issue. So I've just sewn that little bit and then I'm going to zip up the zip again. And if everything has gone according to plan, which I'm hoping it has, this should then line up. And you want to check this before you sew the rest of it. Invisible zips always like to try and be tricky. Just be warned of that too. Because it's not all stitched up. So. Now that it's up, you can see, well, you can't see because it's black, but I can see that the seam is lining up beautifully. So I am now happy that that's the placement of the zip. So now I can open it and zip the whole thing instead of just half. So now I can switch this to this side so that I can still start from the top and be close to the zipper teeth. And I'm going to stitch and I'm going to back stitch. And then I'm going to roll the teeth out of the way and stitch nice and close like this and just work my way down. Now I'm going even slower on this side because the bulk of the dress is now in here as well as I'm not used to sewing on this side as much as the other side. And it is important. Now an invisible zipper foot will always get you closer to the teeth than a non-invisible zipper foot. However, that is okay. It will still look fabulous. I'm just going to push some of the weight through the, the throat of the machine so that it behaves itself. And then I'm just going to keep stitching. So I've now gone past the midriff section. And I'm going all the way to the bottom of the zip. I like to install my zip first and then stitch up the rest, uh, but you can do it in either order, whatever floats your boat. Lock it in, pull it out, trim it off. Again, zip it up, make sure it's all going well. Ta-da! 
zip is in. So I can leave that zipped up for now. I'm then going to turn it inside out. I have finished with my zipper foot, so that is all you needed it for. Uh, but trust me, you will not get a good zipper in, especially a visible zip, without a zipper foot. You just can't get close enough to the teeth with this one because it's in the way. So now all I want to do is I want to come and where the zipper finished, I'm going to push it out at a right angle to match up the fabric. And I'm going to basically continue the stitch line. So I want that one to be on top of that one. I'm going to pull the zip out of the way so it's not going to be in the seam. I'm going to stitch and I'm going to back stitch. And this will just make it so that my stitches follow on from where the zipper was. And then we're going to stitch the skirt shut. And then we can hem it while we're all at that end. Because why not? So I'm just going to hold that together like so. You can use pins again, doesn't matter. The main point that you want to know is that it's matching. and check the zip to make sure that it worked out okay. Uh, if you've got any kind of bumps or lumps or anything, you can just um, unpick that little section to fix it. Where's the zipper? I can't even see it. That's a good sign, isn't it? You yeah, know, zip's fine. So, hemming the bottom, I'm going to start at that seam. Because I have overlocked both of them, I'm going to open it out and fold it up. And then I am just going to stitch. Now you can do a bigger or smaller seam. I know what size I am. Um, you may want to do the seam at the end if you are a shorter than average person or taller than average. You may want to measure everything before you start to make sure that the dress will be long enough. Fortunately for me, I'm pretty standard when it comes to patterns. So I am folding up five eighths of an inch of a hem, and then, or actually, I'm folding up half an inch wide. Oh no, it would be five eighths. It would be five eighths, but I'm not stitching the overlocker. I'm stitching like right next to it. Then I'm going to readjust and continue on. And I'm just going to do this the whole way around the bottom. And then that's that bit done. And then we can go up and finish the top. Now with this seam here, you want to come up and check to see which way that this seam has been stitched into the midriff. Right, because we want this seam to face the same way. So it's coming down. So now that I'm down here, I want to make sure I've actually overlocked it in the other way. So I'm actually going to unsnip it so that I can twist it and put it the right way so that there is no twist under here. Now it won't matter if I snip that little bit because it's inside the hem, you're not going to see it. Therefore, it can't fray and carry on and wreck the dress. But I want that line to be nice, which is why I unsnipped it from the original overlocking. I also possibly could have done this in a slightly longer stitch length, but too late now. 
pulling on it here. I'm just holding it flat because rayon, again, is not my friend all the time. So I'm not actually pulling it. It's just more guiding and it's something to grab onto because it's slippery. So nearly back to the start. Here's the start here. You can trim off the tails once you can see it. When you get it back to the start, we just backstitch. And most of that is hidden because it's black, but it's also hidden because it's at that seam as well. So everyone's a winner. So that's the bottom done. That's the zip in. There's only the armholes, which these should have been cut on the bias, which is a 45 degree angle to the edge of the fabric. Because it gives it, see how it's got a little bit of stretch in it? It means that it's going to be more helpful for the armhole. So one of these I am going to stitch shut. Because one is for the side that is stitched shut, obviously. I know I sound really obvious for sometimes, but I also like to say it. Because you might be wondering why I'm only stitching one. This one goes on the side where the zipper is. And the other one goes on the other side where the zipper is not. So I'm going to zip that open because it's just going to be easier to work with. And I'm also going to start with the other side. So we're going to put the seam here under the arm, which is where this piece is going to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to stitch it to the outside and then fold it under and stitch it on again. We really want pins for this as opposed to the clips. So I'm going to grab the pins and then we're going to pin it on. I've got my pins. This is a magnetic pin cushion. So they're all just magnetized there. I quite enjoy it. All right. So bottom seam, which is here. And we're going to put this right sides together, but on the outside. Basically, we're going to do binding. If you've ever done a quilt, we're binding the armhole. So there's the first bit. So I've pinned there. Now I can just pull this like this to find the opposite point. And it should fit in there really nicely like that. So I'm now going to pin where all the seams are to make sure that this is flowing the same way when I stitch it. That is very important. You want it to sit well. So I'm just adding some pins. You can add as many or as few as you want, but as you can see, pins are definitely the better option for the armhole. And then we're going to flip it and we're going to do the other side. So you've only got the one seam on this side and I am going to push it up as opposed to down because it's the way it kind of wants to sit anyway. Add some more pins just to hold it all in place. You've also noticed I haven't put the table back on my machine. It's not really needed at this point. I'm doing a lot of like smaller tacking-y parts. So the armhole is now in. So I'm now going to stitch it down. You can do it either way. Because it's an armhole, I can actually now just slot it onto here, which makes life much easier. And I'm going to stitch, and I'm going to back stitch. Now you can run over pins. I know some people don't like doing it. That is entirely your call. I don't mind doing it, as you can tell. 
Um, but you can just pull them out before if you prefer. Or you can pull them out after, or you can leave it to the end. Words are always stuck. You do you. I'm not gonna overlock this because this is gonna be hidden in a minute. And I'm nearly back to the start, which is right here. So now what we want to do is we want to bring that up and encase the seam that we just did with the excess. So I'm going to fold it over and then over. So fold it to here and then over like this so that the seam is on the edge. You can also just, if you want to, bring the seam to the edge and then tuck the raw edge under like this and then we're going to stitch it down again. And that is going to hide all of our raw edges on our arm. Ta-da! This will require a lot more pins. I'm not even going to lie. So the easiest way to do this is fold the excess to the, the seam. So I'm folding it to the seam and then just folding the whole lot over. And that is hiding everything neatly encased in the casing or binding or whatever you wish to call it. Facing casing binding, in this particular instance, it's all the same stuff. The main point is, is that there will be no raw edges and that it's sitting beautifully on the edge of the seam. So we'll come to here and under and you can do like main four points and then work in between if that works out easier for you uh, there's not really a right and a wrong answer to this it just wants to sit nicely that's all we really care about and that there's no raw edges because then you won't see them when you put your arm up you won't see the giant seam or anything i mean you could have instead if you wanted to just overlocked this, tucked it in. But this is definitely going to be a neater option. You just want to make sure that that raw edge is nice and tucked in and going to catch in the stitches that you're going to do. So we're going to do something similar to the other side, but I thought we'd finish this one first and then come back. So that's pretty much half. I'm about halfway so again to the line and under tuck it up and under you want to make sure that seems right on the edge of where we're folding because it's going to sit nicer if we do which is obviously the point, or why would we go through all this to begin with? That pin is crooked. I will avoid using crooked pins where possible, but I am slowly running out. I will probably buy some more when I go to the shops next. Which is whenever they're open, because they're not currently. Alright. Tuck in and under. And that one kind of just did it itself, which is lovely. And then I'm just going to put a couple of pins in between here. So after a point, it will just tuck itself for you. But I'm still just going to pin it so it doesn't move while I'm stitching. But while holding it, it is tucking itself, which is lovely. So now we've got this. Again, I'm going to slot it on. Like so. And now I'm just going to stitch the binding down. And you can put, I'm going to pull the pins out as I go because otherwise it's going to be painful and stab me a lot.
which I would obviously prefer not to happen. I don't like being stabbed by pins, it's quite painful. As a general rule, I tend to do about three pins and then I will stop and pull them out. And it's just so as I'm moving around, I won't stab in the arm. So I'm just bringing this around. I'm trying to remove the weight so it's not pulling on it as I'm going. I'm nearly back to the start. And back stitch when you get back to the start. And then trim off all the tails. You don't want them there either. They just make everything look messy. And that's now an armhole done. And it looks lovely. It does have top stitching on the outside, but it does look lovely. And that's all I really care about. How pretty it becomes. So now we're going to do the open armhole. So I'm going to do basically the same thing, but instead of joining it together, I'm going to tuck under that edge so that when I attach it to here, uh, there will be no raw edges at the opening like that. So I'm going to do the same at the other end, which is here. So again, I'm going to tuck it under and attach it down. And you want to make sure that the zipper is facing underneath so that we're not making the zipper sit out. So I have to go and check that other one. So I did this one wrong now that I look at it. You want to tuck the zip back and then attach this because this is now your new edge. Like that. Now this one, I, because it's not a circle, I'm only going to pin the two ends. And this is a practice thing. So don't be embarrassed if you wanted to use more pins. I just, I don't need to. So I'm not going to. I'm going to start here and I'm going to stitch slowly and I'm going to very slowly stitch over the pin which is not ideal but I did it anyway. I'm then going to put the weight of this on my lap and then just hold this till it's even and then I'm going to pinch halfway through and then I can use this hand to kind of guide me. stop with the needle down, readjust, and then again continue sewing. And I'm making sure that those seams are heading in the same direction as underneath. So we're just going to tuck it under like this and then down so that there is again no raw edge but this time I will be pinning the whole thing because I can't hold that much of a tuck. You could also iron it if you find ironing easier to hold things in place. Iron it down so it's going to sit where you want. Just tucking it up and under. And I'm making sure that that seam is right on the edge because it'll sit neater. And neat is important. We're trying to do neat. You can also start from the other end and kind of meet in the middle if that's what you prefer. But again, trim off the tails and any other tails you see floating around. I always do a final once over of all threads because there's a lot of gathering threads. They either may have come undone, or you may have missed them to trim them, or whatever. So at the final pass of any garment, I will go around and make sure I've trimmed off all the tails. There's not usually a lot, but there was always at least one. Always. And that's my fault, and that's fine.
but I just take my snips and work my way all over the fabric. And some of them aren't even attached. Sometimes you just trim it, but instead of putting it in the bin, it ends up on your counter and then gets back attached to the garment. All right, I have made a boo-boo here. When I was stitching, it's caught something here. So I need to unstitch that. Otherwise, it's going to have a weird gaping moment, which I do not want. So that was just that little bit there. So when I stitched over that, I accidentally caught part of the fabric. So now I'm just going to stitch that inch shot again. It's probably not even an inch, but I stitched at least an inch. And then again, trim off the tails. Now it's not attached and it's looking lovely again. You will find after a while it will just self tuck, but you still want to put pins in. And this is going around a curve, which is why we cut it on the bias, because you will find it likes to sit nicer, which is good. You want it to be able to sit nice. If you don't cut this piece on the bias, there's a good chance it's going to pucker on one side. So take the time. And because you don't necessarily see it, if you run out of the fabric you've got, just cut a similar fabric on the bias to tuck it under. Or by bias tape, if you don't want to have to deal with that. You can buy it in packets that are like five meters. So you could buy one packet in a neutral like skin tone and then use it for all dresses in the future that don't have sleeves. This pattern comes with sleeves. I could have definitely done them, but I always do sleeves. So I thought I'd do something different and have a sleeveless one. That and the pattern's really pretty. Okay, so that is now all tucked under, and I can see that that looks lovely. So now I'm going to stitch it down. Same as the other side, except again, it's not in a circle. And I'm going to move nice and slowly so nothing gathers underneath. So not as worried about pins this time around because it's not a circle so I'm less likely to stab myself it's not impossible but it is definitely less likely and again I'm not pulling this I'm just holding it so it sits nicely there's no strength in what I'm doing over here pins off. Now the end also might be a little bit thicker because of the um, the zipper that's there, but that's okay. So now when you zip this up and turn it right sides out, it should be lovely. We're nearly finished. We just got one final step and that is tacking down that neckline so it won't sit up like this because this would drive me insane and I wouldn't wear it. So we just need to tuck it under. But apart from that, the sleeves look lovely. There's no raw edges anywhere. Um, so now all I want to do is I want to, this is our facing and I'm going to show you this up close. So I'm going to roll it until the seam is right on the edge. And then I'm going to push down with it all flat. And this is where a seam is here. So then I'm going to grab just the seam part and this top part. And I'm going to stitch and back stitch and just do like a little tack right there. So I'm not stitching through the actual garment. I'm stitching through the facing and then like the seam allowance. And this is going to hold it down. So it doesn't have to be neat. It's just a little tack down like that. You could also do a zigzag that doesn't move if that suits you better. And then I'm going to go to the next seam. And I'm going to do this for all seams that I can get my hands on. Because this is going to help it not pop up and annoy us. 
without having to stitch it and see the stitches on the outside. So again, I'm just stitching back and forth. It's not super neat, but it's so tiny you don't see it anyway. So that is now the back. See how it's stopped sticking up? This also needs a final iron, by the way. And I'm going to do the shoulder seams. So the front seams. I want to basically do as many seams as humanly possible to make sure that it stays down. Now I don't have to do the bottom V because the way they did the pattern, it got tacked down with the midriff. So the, the front part actually already sits nice and flat, which is a bonus. But I've got four seams that I can do that will just help it stay down. So like that. They're not very exciting back and forth. They're not long. You're not doing like eight stitches. I'm doing like three, maybe. And then just back and forth and back and forth. And so now is the time when you go around and you start looking for threads. So like there's one from attacking I did a second ago. You just want to go and chop them off. You might even find it easier to turn inside out. But your dress is complete. It just needs a final iron to help that sit down flat. You would also put a little tag here. If you have like a name tag, that would be very cool. But yeah, your maxi dress is now complete. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.